this entitled parent is incredibly negligent, so much so that she abandons her children in a shopping center for over two hours. But when she calls the police, of course she blames everyone else except herself. Happy birthday, today's your birthday, on with the revamp show. In the cast, me, female, 16, BF, my boyfriend, 17, Annie, EM's daughter, M, man at the help desk, ND, nice dad, EM, the reason why you're here, P1 and 2, policeman 1 and 2. Important to note, I live in a fairly small town, so many people know each other. This happened last year, mid-June. We were on a break from school, and boyfriend and I decided to get some snacks for a movie date. As one does, we go to the supermarket and start grabbing our stuff. We were debating which cider, I'm a lightweight, I should grab when I see Annie enter the aisle. She looked scared and was crying a little bit, as anyone with a little bit of heart would do. We leave the cider for now and go to see what's the matter. Hey there, are you okay? What's wrong? Annie looking up at me. Mummy. Mummy in French. Oh, have you lost your mum? She sniffles and nodded. Well, we're gonna help you find her. Is that okay with you? I'm me and this is BF. What's your name? Annie. I took her by the hand and walked up to the help desk, while BF paid for the groceries. We didn't get cider. I notified the man working the desk that Annie had lost her mother. He was very kind and asked for Annie's name and family name so he could make a call on the microphone, which went about like this. The little Annie X has lost her mother. Could the mother of Annie X present herself at the reception desk? Annie was sat on a little bench that was facing the exit. That way, she could have seen if her mother was headed out. It was rush hour, Friday, around 5pm. So it took BF a while to pay for everything and get to us. By that time, another message was sent around the store. Poor Annie was scared as she kept asking where her mummy was. We tried to entertain her. M allowed her to read a book from the book aisle to prevent her from freaking out too much. After one hour, she claimed she was hungry, which seems fair, it was probably around 6 to 6.30 p.m. We didn't have very healthy food with us, but we gave her a little snack, a sponge stuffed with chocolate shaped like a bear. Look up Lulu Lurazon. This went on until one and a half hours after the first call was made. Man pulled BF and I aside for a minute, saying that they were obligated to call the police because this could be a case of child abandonment. This was a relief in a way because the police would know how to take care of her a little better. About 10 minutes later, two policemen showed up and came inside. Boyfriend, man and I were first asked about the situation. Annie was asked a couple of questions too. Hi Annie, I'm Policeman One. I'm here to help you find your mummy. Is mummy in trouble? No, don't worry, she's not in trouble and neither are you. If we want to find her quickly, I'm going to need to know what she looks like. Do you think you can help me? Annie nodded and described her mum's hair colour, eye colour, and very roughly what she was wearing. Mostly colours since she was only about three. Well, shortly after that, a man and a woman entered the store. Well, the man was running like crazy and the woman walking slowly behind him. The man was calling for Annie, looking so worried. This prompted Annie to look up and her face lit up. She ran up to them screaming, Mama and Papa! Mummy, Daddy in French. Andy hugs her and looks so relieved. He was apologizing to her so many times. The police still asked to see both of their IDs just to confirm that they were indeed Annie's parents. But that seemed to be more of a formality since Annie was the one to recognize them. P2 asked them what happened and what we heard shocked us. Well, I was doing my groceries, but Annie was being annoying. So I sent her to look at the toys. And well, I just forgot she was there and went home. It's only when Andy came home from work that we noticed she wasn't there. Miss, you do realize that your daughter could have been kidnapped. If these two hadn't been there, gestures towards us, who knows what could have happened to her? Well, then it's fine. Why make such a big deal out of it? Why did you two even call the police? Are you trying to get me arrested? We didn't call the police. M did because it's apparently store policy. We didn't know what was going on. This could have been a case of child abandonment. EM was not pleased by this comment, clearly. How dare you? Are you telling me I'm a bad mother? Is that what you're insinuating, young man? Before BF could reply, ND gave her a look that would make anyone shut up right away. I bet he's a teacher. After a bit more talk, the little family were allowed to leave and so were we. ND thanked us profusely for our time. 
We went home, had our movie night, but I think about that sometimes. This woman was so careless with her kid, it baffles me. They said that they called the police because it could have been a case of child abandonment, but essentially isn't that what it was? The child was abandoned because she went home and she forgot her child. Kids getting lost in a supermarket happens all the time. The parent thinks that the kid's following them and they end up in a different aisle, or the kid intentionally runs away and hides, things like that. But how do you leave a store and for an hour and a half you forgot your child, and it's only until the dad comes home that he's like, hey where's our child? It just seems a bit suspicious to me. Hey guys, I see a lot of stories on here, so I thought I'd give one that happened just before the lockdown. So without further ado, here is our star-studded cast. Me, EM the Mega Karen, EMF Karen's friend, WB work buddy, and BB big boss. The first thing to note is I work in a very well-known fast food chain that the staff of are often looked down upon because of having this job must mean I failed education. I actually have a degree but I like my job here, and we have a policy that our bosses try and enforce even if we think it's stupid. The policy is that if you have a mail, you get one sauce sachet for free. They're 10 pence for any extra, as the store lost 5k last year from free sauces being given out, which is crazy. Enter Karen. Her and two other Karens bring their actually really nice kids in and come to my till to place their order. I give the kids balloons as they're really polite and sweet. It was two boys and a girl, shouldn't be older than seven. We get to the end of the order and ask if they would like sauces, explaining that it would be an extra charge after she asked for three pounds worth of ketchup. Also bear in mind that we have pumps of sauces that are free. She tells me to take them off the order after I explain and give her a receipt and tell them to wait to collect their order. I start processing other orders and bagging them up and getting drinks as it gets fairly busy and WB is fairly new so I'm trying to help her and keep her happy as it can get overwhelming. She gets the order ready for EM and hands it over. Now I'm just out of sight at the drink station and here the EM asks for sources. WB puts them on a tray for her, not knowing the policy yet. I let it slide as I don't want to embarrass her in front of customers. So once she was done I let her know and we laugh as it really wasn't her fault. Then EMF appeared, hearing me talking to WB and begins screeching. I want to speak to your manager. How dare you berate her for having good customer service you money grubbing jerk. I'm sorry, she's new here and isn't aware of the policy yet. Where is your manager? You should not be working with people! Now, I'm a chill person generally and do my best to keep everyone happy. I have really good customer service skills. It's why I'm the only guy on the till. Give me a moment, he's in the office. Karen folds her arms, scowling like she's just smelled bad eggs. I get my manager and he sighs coming out to deal with the situation. Hello miss, what seems to be the problem? That boy has been nothing but rude. He refused my children's sauce. He shouted at this girl for no reason. He should be fired. I want our meal comped. Wait, for what? I mouth WTF to WB and she is just as stunned as I am. Then she does the unexpected. I'm sorry miss, but he did no such thing. He told me something I didn't know, and from what he tells me, you just did this to get free sources. Silence. No one expected her to speak up as she seems like the most timidest person on the planet. It takes a second, but EMF collects herself. You allow your staff to talk to customers like this? It's disgraceful. BB looks at me. Well done. Thank you for helping our new starters with our policies and procedure. And miss, I won't be comping anything. It's very clear what's going on here. And if you think you are the first person to try and get freebies out of us, you are mistaken. You're only embarrassing yourself and your friends. Now you can either sit down and eat your food, or you can leave. I'm not going to punish my staff for doing their job. EMF looks stunned, like someone just slapped her. And my manager pulled me into the office to laugh about the situation and give me employee of the month for helping WB with her training. I haven't seen EM or her EMF since, but for some reason I don't feel bad about it. I and WB are really good friends now and we are both looking at stepping up to becoming trainers. If you work in fast food or if you have ever worked in fast food, you know that fast food joints are a magnet for Karens. There's a Karen at least every day. 
you just kind of hope that you don't get shifted on whilst the Karen is there. The best thing a Karen can do is threaten to never eat there again. Little do they know, that's exactly what we want. I was 15-ish years old when my mum started having my half-siblings. So by 16, 17, the three of them were toddlers and behaved well enough to go to Whale Mart. <laughs> Story 1. I live in Louisiana. Public schools have a uniform. The night before, mum asks me if it's okay if she picks me up from school to do a Whale Mart run. I agree. This uniform has a red polo shirt, slacks, and mandatory badge with your grade, year in school, with your name and picture. I usually take off the badge when I go somewhere after school or cover it with a jacket. I forgot to. Around 3 p.m., we're at Whale Mart. Mum has one sibling in a basket, and I have the other two in my cart. I'm mostly pushing my siblings around the toy aisles when Mum suddenly remembers she needs something from the other side of the store. So I'm alone with two toddlers. I'm pushing the cart back and forth when this older lady comes into the aisle I'm in with her own toddler in the cart. I make eye contact, but I'm far more invested in keeping my siblings calm. I noticed this woman had a bad blonde dye job, long fake pink nails, hella wrinkles, and the haircut before I knew what it was. She dressed southern classy style, but obviously doesn't have the money to actually be classy. As in, obviously fake jewellery, and it's big and heavy looking. I've gone back to my siblings at this point as this lady approaches me. She's K for Karen and I'm obviously OP. Karen glaring at me. Are these yours? She motions to my cart. OP, thinking she means the toys my siblings have dragged into the cart, well, not yet, I laugh nervously. What do you mean these children are not yours yet? Oh, I thought you meant the toys. Karen looks at my school ID, then back to me. Aren't you too young for kids? How old were you when you had them? Well, actually I was 15 when sibling one was 15? Now I have bad social anxiety, and it's worse when someone's yelling at me. So I'm shaking a bit. She starts going off on this tirade about I should have waited until marriage, that I better marry their dad soon, and that I should drop out of school to take care of them. OP finding the idea of marrying my stepdad repulsive enough to have <laughs> the courage to yell, Ma'am, that would require me marrying my stepdad. This is not Alabama. Karen freezes. Now around this point my mum returns in a hurry and tells this woman sternly to leave all my children alone. Karen's eyes get bug-eyed, realising that I'm one of those kids. She mutters one of those non-apologies and leaves. Mum treats me to some ice cream. Story 2. Senior year of high school, so I'm 18 years old. Go to Whale Mart with my mum and my siblings. Similar setup as last time. I remembered to cover my badge with a jacket this time. My mum has my brother in her cart and goes to get something. My sisters and I are looking at dolls. I'm trying to convince them that they don't need the Barbie with this big set. I think it was a house. But they keep pushing it into the cart anyways. DK is dense Karen. While my back is to the aisle, this woman apparently came into it with her own kid. Now, her kid is one of those brats that points at things and goes, I want that, and expects their mum to put it in the cart. I can hear this kid pointing at various dolls. She then points at the one in our cart and goes, I want that one. Hi you, do you work here? Now to be fair, a chunk of staff go to the same high school. They have to wear the same slacks at work. Some wear their school jackets to work. The only way this lady would be able to tell I didn't work there was my shirt. I turn enough to see her, and that's when she also sees my siblings. She's dressed almost the same as the first Karen, only she has pink in her hair to look young. Oh my gosh, you have children? Ma'am, please don't yell. I do not work here. I unzip my jacket to show the school shirt. She also sees my student ID. Oh my goodness, you're underage! Ma'am, please, you're scaring the kids. She starts entering a similar tirade the first Karen did. That I should have waited, I need to marry their daddy, that I need to drop out, because being a mum is so much more important than a piece of paper. I've tried interrupting her several times, but she only shrieks louder. I see a big burly man walk down the aisle towards us. I realise he's in uniform for security. Ma'am, if you don't stop yelling, you'll be escorted out. How can you be a good Christian man and not react to the sins before you? Ma'am. She turns around and actually looks at him. 
She freezes a bit but turns back to me. Give me your toy. What? I bet you can't afford it. You have two kids. Give me the set. OP angrily and yelling. They are my siblings. Just give me the darn set. Security firmly puts a hand on her shoulder and whispers something to her. She goes pale. Security almost marches her out the aisle. I do my best to calm down my sisters who are brave enough not to cry. My mum shows up soon after and sees me badly shaken up. I tell her what happened as we get treated to burgers. I'm no mind reader and I can't know what's truly in people's hearts. So I don't know if this lady was really a Christian or not, but even I know that 1 Corinthians 5 verse 12 says, What business is it of mine to judge those outside the church? Are we not to judge those inside the church? So even if she was right and this young woman was living in sin, it's not her job to judge her. The religious leaders of the day hated Jesus. Why? Because he ate and drank with sinners. Prostitutes, tax collectors, you name it. And maybe if she showed love and kindness towards her, she would have realized that she was mistaken all along. That they actually weren't her kids, they were just her siblings. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. All right, Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.